Hello, and welcome to 5-Minute Math. Today we are looking at the fourth grade concept of angles, specifically how we can identify angles in two-dimensional shapes, and we'll do it in five minutes or less. So before we look at the angles and shapes, let's make sure we have a clear understanding of these three types of angles, acute, right, or obtuse. I always like to start with a right angle. A right angle is a 90-degree angle, if you measure it on a protractor, and you've got perpendicular lines, one line that goes straight up and down, one line that goes straight side to side, and it, you typically have a little square kind of drawn in the corner to show that it actually is a right angle. Now, it could be rotated a little bit. Sometimes you're going to see a right angle that kind of looks like this, and you're like, uh, I think that might be 90 degrees. Always look for that little square. It's going to rotate it like that. So an acute angle is going to be any angle that is less than 90 degrees, but, you know, greater than zero. It has to at least be open, right? So it's got to be less than 90. So you can have an angle that is, you know, pretty pretty tight, pretty close uh, to about halfway there. You can have the world's tiniest angle that almost looks like it's completely shut. Or you can have an angle that almost looks like it's a 90 degree, but if you measure it, it's like 86 or 87 degrees. It's not quite any any of these are acute angles. Acute angles is a wide measure of angles that are less than 90. And then the obtuse angles are going to be those that are greater than 90, but less than 180. 180 is a straight angle. So it can be just a little bit larger than a 90 degree. It almost looks like 90, but you're not going to see that little square. It's a little bit fatter. And it could be almost a straight angle. That's a really big angle. Most of your obtuse angles look kind of halfway in between. Yeah, it's about 120, 530 degrees. So those are all the different types of angles, and most of them are all centered around, are they a larger obtuse than a right angle, or are they smaller acute than a right angle? Now, let's see what that looks like when we find them in shapes. A lot of times it's easy to start with triangles, because you can find all kinds of angles in triangles. So I'm going to draw a right triangle. And you are going to see that I've got that little square there. Now I'm going to classify this simply by the angle measures right here. So this is going to be a right angle. So I'll put an R right there. But what are these other two? Well, we know that if you have a right angle in a triangle, the other two have to be acute. It's impossible to have two right angles in a triangle, or it's impossible to have a right and an obtuse in a triangle. Now, I can have a triangle that have all three acute angles, right? It could be isosceles. I'm trying to draw an equilateral triangle here, but these three are all less than 90. So you can have all three acute angles if you want to. You can even have an obtuse triangle. Now, an obtuse triangle is kind of like a right triangle, in which if you have one really big angle like that, that one's obtuse, the other two have to be acute. It's impossible to have a triangle with two obtuse angles, or even a triangle with one right and one obtuse. One obtuse angle means the other two have to be acute, but that just works with triangles. Let's look at quadrilaterals. Well, most of us are familiar with a square and a rectangle. Those are pretty distinct, and we recognize them because they each have four right angles. And so we put the little squares there. I'll just put the little square rather than an R because that square is going to denote that it's got a right angle, perpendicular lines, or sometimes we call them a square corner. But you can have some quadrilaterals that don't have right angles. Most of us are familiar with a trapezoid. So this is your traditional trapezoid. Trapezoid actually has two big angles, two obtuse angles. But then it also has two acute angles. And I can also do the same thing with a parallelogram. The only difference is, is the obtuse angles are kind of opposite here. But I've got two obtuse angles right here, two little acute angles over here. Now, I can draw a right trapezoid. Check this out. A right trapezoid, and it's got all three types of angles. It's got two rights. It's got an obtuse and it has an acute. 